Lesson 8. Self-Control Self-control is the balance wheel with which you control your enthusiasm and direct it where you wish it to carry you. This lesson will teach you in a most practical manner to become the master of your fate. To be a person who is well-balanced, you must be a person in whom enthusiasm and self-control are equalized. Those who do not exercise self-control suffer the loss of a great power which they need in their struggle for achievement of their definite chief aim. If you neglect self-control, you're likely to hurt others and certainly to hurt yourself. Lack of self-control is the average salesman's most damaging weakness. A counter-remark can be fatal to a sale. Life is too short and there's too much constructive work to be done to justify us in striking back at everyone who says that which we do not wish to hear. Page 13. Even qualities like self-confidence and self-sacrifice are dangerous when they're developed beyond the point of reason. They are forms of lack of self-control. A person with well-developed self-control will stimulate his imagination and his enthusiasm until they have produced action. But he will then control that action and not permit it to control him. Another form of lack of self-control is the habit of forming opinions before studying the facts. This will be analyzed in Lesson 11. The habit of spending, the subject of Lesson 4, is also a form of lack of self-control. When the author gets angry, he sits down and writes his thoughts to get them out of his system. He's then free to act with self-control. These repressed emotions, often hatred, are too dangerous to act on. This harmonizes with the principle of psychoanalysis. Not only do you have the power to think, but you have the power to control your thoughts and direct them to do your bidding. You can select the material out of which your thinking is produced. That is auto-suggestion. You can allow other people to select the material out of which your thinking is produced. That is suggestion. Self-control is solely a matter of thought control. Place in your own mind, through the principle of auto-suggestion, the positive and constructive thoughts which harmonize with your definite chief aim in life, and that mind will transform those thoughts into physical reality and hand them back to you as a finished product. That is thought control. When you deliberately choose the thoughts which dominate your mind and firmly refuse admittance to outside suggestion, you are exercising self-control in its highest and most efficient form. Thought, whether accurate or inaccurate, is the most highly organized functioning power of your mind. You are the sum total of your dominating or most prominent thoughts. A master salesman won't hear a no, for it would be accepting someone else's suggestion. He is a person who persuades others to accept his suggestion. He will persist until he hears a yes. This too is self-control. If an argument arises, a master salesman will take the offensive never the defensive side. The word salesman has reference to all people who try to persuade or convince others by logical argument or appeal to self-interest. We are all forms of salesmen, no matter what form of service we are rendering or what sort of goods we are offering. The ability to negotiate with other people without friction and argument is the outstanding quality of all successful people. The art of successful negotiation grows out of patient and painstaking self-control. You are limited only by the debt of your desires. Behind every self-control and thought control is your desire to do so. If you find yourself to be different from people who achieve big things, it's only on the fact that they desired the object of their achievement with more depth and intensity than you desire yours. Most people dissipate lots of energy through lack of self-control. One very common and very destructive form of lack of self-control is the habit of talking too much. Most of the time, it's more profitable to listen than to speak. The law of retaliation is available to the person who exercises self-control. If someone does you an injury, you'll retaliate. However, if someone does you kindness, you'll retaliate too. A person that understands this law can make someone else act the way he wants. When you learn to take all sorts of punishment and abuse without retaliation, you're making sure that no one dominates you. If you refuse to get angry and retaliate in kind, you'll take the other person by surprise and you'll be the one dominating the exchange.